guys, so I was asked to go in a little bit more depth on my fire kit and what I carry and kind of the uses of some of the components of it. And we went through some of the stuff on my last video about what's in my bushcraft backpack. But today we're gonna look at this stuff a little bit closer. So the first thing we're gonna look at today is this fire steel. And I believe this is a Strike Master. Um, it's, it's a little bit different than most fire steels. It has the, the big fat uh, ferrocium rod, kind of like a, the LMF uh, Army steels. Um, but it also has a magnesium rod on it. And the handle itself is a hardwood. Um, I believe it's made of uh, paddock. And this is actually something you can shave down and use as tinder as well. So. It, you know, it's kind of a, a three-in-one tool. And uh, what I really like about it more than anything is I really like the size of it, the handle. The smaller fire steels I have more difficulty with. Um, you know, when you get them down into your tinder pile and you start striking them, because they're so short and my hands are big, I end up pushing my hand down into the, into the pile, messing stuff up. And even if I do the pullback method where you're pulling the fire steel back, towards you, it, it, because of the shortness, you don't get a min as many strikes or as long as a strike with a longer fire steel. And actually, I would like to get a longer fire steel. I'm looking at, I'd like to get like a five or six inch, you know, half inch diameter, three quarter inch diameter rod. I think the bigger ones are even better, but this is what I have right now. So I'm gonna start messing with this and we'll see how this, uh, how this works. So the first thing I wanna try, I want to try the magnesium scrapings on this on this fire steel. Um, typically, the Dones and the military issue um, magnesium scrapers are a lot harder, and they don't scrape as easy. This one, as you can see, is really taken off scrapings easily. When you get these in a pile, the theory is that you're going to hit it. and it's gonna burn hot. And I think the magnesium burns at something like uh, over 5,000 degrees. Of course, that was a real quick flash in the pan because everything's blowing away. So I'm just building a little bit of a, a brace here. So we're gonna do magnesium. And I'm rotating the bar around so I don't get a, a big wear spot in one area. We're gonna do some of the wood. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is once I hit this, it's gonna go and I'm gonna put my grass over it and that's gonna be, I'm gonna start my fire. Move it around to get some oxygen in it. Some of my smaller sticks and debris. So that worked pretty well. Now the other tool I carry in my fire kit is this pocket bellows. And really what it does is it forces air into areas that you can't get to. So I put this down, the small end down into it. I'm able to add oxygen to the fire, and I don't have to get my head or my mouth close to the fire when breathe in all the smoke.
one of the simplest and easiest ways to get a fire going. The problem with when you're saying, oh well, a Bix the best way, you know, lighter. Lighters are great, but the thing is, you know, you have to hold them underneath your source, and that gets to be difficult. It's hard on your hand. You you know end up getting the mechanism ends up getting hot because you're holding the you know you're holding the the, um, the flame a long time. So if you can have something that you can hit with a spark and then walk away and let it do its work for you, that's a lot easier. And these are easily made at home, just with standard 100% cotton balls and petroleum jelly that you just kind of rub into the cotton balls and then stuff them into a container like that. The great thing about this is, hit it with one spark, it goes. You know, it's resisting the wind. Wind's not really affecting it. I'm gonna put my brakes back up. Some of the smaller stuff on top. Make sure I'm not choking it out. I want to give it oxygen. That's going to burn for a while. You know, and this took no. This took very little, let me say, very little wood preparation to do this kind of fire. It's basically found twigs, uh, dead grass, and I've got something going. Now to be more sustainable, I'm gonna wanna spend some time, I wanna process some wood down, I wanna get to, to the dry center uh, by batoning and splitting and, and doing feather sticks and all that and working through my different sizes of wood. But for a quick fire where you just, you know, you need to get warm, you're cold, you're out, and you have a few things on you in your fire kit, this is a way of doing it. Very simple. Doesn't have to be a big production and it works. Now the last thing that I brought that's in my kit is a flint and steel kit. And flint and steel is one of those things that it's, it's, um, that you have to practice. And my kit has, this particular one has a very small fire steel that was gifted to me. I have some tinder tabs. I have char cloth, fatwood, a piece of chaga, and of course my flip pieces. And then I also carry some more fat wood and some, um, there's some punk wood in there and there's also jute twine. So it gives me a couple different options if like the tinder in the area is really marginal. I can't find enough to make a really good tinder bundle. I can do that with the jute twine that I brought. 